my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Sunday, January the 24th and it is a frosty day where I am. Uh, the forecast for the next several days is frostiness, so highs of, you know, minus 15 degrees Celsius, minus 11 degrees Celsius. Um, you know, we, we had a pretty good January going there uh, with not horrendous temperatures, so um, you know, it's not unexpected that we have this type of weather. And it's certainly not highs of minus 20, so a little reminder to myself to be grateful because it could always be worse. It could be, you know, minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is really frosty. But anyway, uh, if you are a new viewer to my channel, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for stopping by because you know uh, pretty much what you're in for for this video. Uh, the topic for this week is let's talk about changing a pattern. Uh, as usual, we will do the topic at the very end, so we'll get through all the rest of it first. Um, and I will say, so last week's video, thank you for the comments on that. They were greatly appreciated. Um, and several questions and comments in there that are deserving of responses and answers. And as I discovered as I was going through some through some things last week, I uh, had missed a couple of comments on some previous videos that had some questions, so I am going to deal with those as well. So as usual, when we do the question and answer period, I'm going to be looking over here because this is, you know, where I keep all the notes. So one of the questions that I missed on a previous video is Denise had asked a question uh, on a couple of videos ago about the sunflowers video. Um, previous finish that I showed by Just Nan, so this is just a reminder. Um, so that's what that looks like. And she wanted to know if this pattern was suitable for stitching on Ada. And my answer is maybe. It depends on um, how you feel about doing certain things. So I will tell you the specialty stitches that are used in, in, in this particular pattern are Smyrna crosses, um, back stitch triple rice stitches, round eyelets, diamond eyelets, satin cushion, um, and a square rose. So there are specialty stitches. I will say that predominantly I would say probably 75 to 80 percent of this chart is just regular cross stitch. The remaining 20, 25 percent is related to those specialty stitches. So one, it depends on uh, whether you want to tackle doing those specialty stitches uh, on Ada. So for example, um, the diamond eyelets, there are eight of them. So it's not like there's, you know, a plethora of them. Um, so one of the questions is, you know, do you want to try that? Some of the things like the satin cushion, um, there are, you know, even technically the back stitch, triple rice stitch, you could overlay those areas um, with cross stitches instead of doing the specialty stitches. It will change the look of your finished product a little bit. Um, but you know, unless you have a ton of needle workers coming through your house who know this chart very well, it's not likely that people will go like, hmm, what did you do there? Um, so my answer is a firm, it depends. So it depends on your comfortability about attempting to do the specialty stitches on Ada or whether you're comfortable changing your pattern and taking the specialty stitches out and replacing it with something else. Uh, so how's that for a resounding answer? Hope that helps. Um, let me know if you've got other questions on that particular chart. Um, I was also contemplating sort of saying the other thing you could do is if uh, you're more comfortable on Ada, you know, people are hesitant about if you're comfortable in Ada about necessarily moving into a needle weave, whether it's linen or what I call a needle weave like Lugana or Jobelin, you could technically, um, you know, if you went to a 25 count, which would make it slightly larger um, than the original one, um, there are lots of people out there who find the jump to 25 easier than trying to go to 28. So 
So 28 count even weave is the same as a 14 count Ada. Um, so you could maybe do it on 25. This particular chart, the model was stitched on 32. Um, I still think you would be okay because normally I sort of say, hey, when you're changing the count of the fabric, um, because this comes with a bead pack, um, but my answer is, yeah, I think the, I think the beads would still work out just fine if you were moving it down even to a 25 count. But that's me. It's your project. You know what you're comfortable with, so you'll have to make uh, what the right decision is for you. But hope that helps. So that's question number one. Okay, uh, I got a comment on a previous video, clearly when I was moaning and complaining about Krynik, which <laughs> usually happens every time I use Krynik, um, that I could try Petite Treasure Braid. And the answer is yes, I know about Petite Treasure Braid, I have used Petite Treasure Braid, and I do have to say, uh, I do like Petite Treasure Braid better than I like the Krynik products. Uh, but there are a couple of factors that go into when I use Krynik. So one on the Marbeck Nativity, I am absolutely using Krynik because this is a project that has already been started on multiple panels or completed. And I, I want consistency um, of the threads across all five panels. And so for the Marbeck Nativity, I'm going to continue using Krynik products because that's, um, I want that consistency across them. Two, um, like on Lady Scarlet's Journey, when I'm using the Krynik, the reason why I'm using Krynik is for a couple of reasons. One, I'm doing Stitch from Stash this, this year. Um, now, I probably have some Petite Treasure Braid in my stash that I could have replaced it with, but the answer is when I um, buy a chart like uh, Lady Scarlet's Journey, when there are specialty fibers on there, I usually try to buy those specialty fibers when I am purchasing the pattern. And the reason for that is, as I have experienced uh, over time, uh, fibers get discontinued. You can't get them anymore. Um, all sorts of things go on with that. And so um, having been trained by my mother on this front, so yes, Miss Katie, I'm blaming my mother again publicly. It's her fault. This is her training. Um, I have bought the specialty fibers. So when I bought uh, Lady Scarlet's Journey, um, the specialty fibers, which was the Karen Impressions, as well as the Krynik number four braid, I would have purchased at the same time. And I will say, because I go, I've had this chart for 20 years in my stash. Um, the Rainbow Gallery, to my recollection, the Rainbow Gallery products weren't as prevalent um, way back in the olden days as they are now. Um, so, you know, the, the pattern called for a Krynik number four braid. I bought a number four braid, and so I've, I'm using it on the product on the project because I have it in my stash and I'm trying to use my stash up. So, uh, and, and you will see that, you know, I, it's not that I will never use Krynik. Um, if I have opportunities these days uh, for new patterns that I haven't already bought the specialty stuff for, um, yes, I generally try to swap out the Krynik for uh, a Petite Treasure Braid. But if it's something where I already bought the specialty ones, I'm trying to use the stuff that I already purchased for it that were called for in the pattern so that I can use up my stash. So that's my that's my answer on on Petite Treasure Braid. If you are new to the metallics though, if you can swap out your Krynik for a Petite Treasure Braid, uh, so a, a Krynik number four braid, Krynik number four braid is the same as Petite Treasure Braid. Uh, I do recommend that because I do like using, it's not that it's gonna be a world of difference. It's not like you're gonna go like, oh my goodness, this is life altering. Um, but I do find the Petite Treasure Braid just a little bit easier to use than the Krynik. So that's me. All right. Uh, I enjoyed the comments that came in about people who enjoy their bobbins and even bobbins in floss away bags when they're kidding up projects. Um, I thought it was interesting. So the link that I provided last week to the um, 
Cross Stitch Storage and Organization Facebook group. I thought it was really interesting because there were quite a few posts last week in particular that talked about floss storage and organization. Um, so I kind of chuckled in. I, f I feel really on topic there. <laughs> now, it's a whole Facebook group devoted to that, so I shouldn't be really all that surprised, but I felt really quite topical. Um, and again, uh, if you have a method that works for you and you're totally happy with it, that is the method you should be using. Um, again, I always say, hey, it's always interesting to see new things that are people using that they sort of go, I'm changing all my stuff over. But if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. And, um, you know, hence I don't use the thread drops because they don't work for me. But other people think they're fantastic and I think that's great. And if they work for you, you should use them. And if bobbins work for you, bobinate to your heart's content. And organize them in whichever method makes you happiest. So, you know, whether you're, uh, I had one comment that came in that said that they do keep it by color. Um, and the reason why is because they started with embroidery and they were choosing their own colors and... You know, so again, if that's how you've started, it feels completely comfortable. You know how you've got it set it, set up. I have a little too much finance background in me. I like things in numerical order, except for the overdyed threads. Even though even though they have numbers, I like them by name. <laughs> so, DMC anchor by number, classic color works, gas, everything else by name. Anyway, that's me. That's me, and that's how it works for me, and, you know, so there you go. That's that one. Uh, Miss Kitty, thanks for the comment. Um, I will tell you, I am calling it a squirrel because the chart calls it a squirrel. If it's actually a chipmunk, I have no idea. You know I have no idea about the animal thingies. You know, you've talked to me personally on that. You asked me a question, I kind of looked at you very confused and went, huh? Anyway, uh, if it's a chipmunk, okay. I call it a squirrel because the chart calls it a squirrel. And clearly the chart's right. Anyway. Um, I also got a question in about what to do with one of those large hanks of silk. Um, so I pulled one out of my stash. So this is my hank of silk. Okay, this is one of the hanks of silk that I have. So I'm just going to... Isn't that lovely? Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, so still, still, nothing has happened to this since I received it. And I do have to say, I received this as a gift. I actually won this uh, from Silks for You. Um, and I have decided we should talk about that because if you don't know about uh, how you could potentially win a hank of silk, um, you should. So stay tuned for a couple of weeks and we'll talk about how to do that. Um, but I won this. I have done nothing with it. This is from Silks For You. Um, they do have a Facebook group and in that Facebook group there is a posting that talks about um, how to cut up your hank, particularly a silks for you hank. Now they do talk about that they dye this uh, in a loop and so it has to do with sort of uh, a lining up lining up things with where where the variegation is is the same and starting to change. So clearly I have not done that yet because I haven't figured out what project I'm using this for, but isn't, isn't that lovely? Lovely, lovely, lovely. I should find a project for that, but 2021 is kitted. Still could change, but never mind that. Um, and there are several floss tube videos about what to do with hanks of this size. And I've seen all sorts of different things. So whether you cut into this, um, I have seen people where um, they aren't cutting into it, but they're like literally sort of drawing around the reel, but they are using um, hair clips, you know, those round clips um, that they, they are using the hair clips to sort of keep the hank together as they're um, taking their, 
they're unwinding it for, <laughs> for what they're using it for. So I will say I don't have the I don't have the perfect method because I've never I have a I have a few hanks um, I've never cut into them because yeah they're intimidating um, so one of these years I should get I should get on that and we should do something with that but um, yeah check out a couple of the floss tube videos um, so just search for floss tube Hank. Um, and they should come up. Um, and again, uh, if you, uh, I don't even think you need to become a member uh, on the Facebook group. I think you just need to, I think you can go into it because it's a public group. I think you can find, um, again, go to the, the Facebook group and search for Hank of Silk and see the entries that pop up. But I, I was on there uh, this week and they uh, did find one where they were talking specifically about and they sort of outlined it in a, in steps as to how they recommend you uh, start cutting into this um, into their into their hanks that are over dyed uh, I was so happy when I won this anyway silks for you comes from Australia okay uh, Char J57. Oh my goodness. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for commenting. And I have to say to you, man, have I got questions for you. Um, so if you're willing to entertain some, some questions about the Marbet Nativity, um, can you shoot me an email? Um, so my email address is citystitcher52 at gmail.com. Um, so she had a couple of uh, tips. So she has done the Marbet Nativity. Um, she completed it in 1995. It took her five years to stitch all of the panels. Um, and she's framed it in the specialty frame that I have uh, as well. She says she loves her Marbeck Nativity, which was great to hear. It's great to hear that you get to end of it and you go like it really was worth all of that effort. Uh, so she did have a couple of tips for me on the center panel. One, that there's a change in the crinex as you come down that center beam, which I have completed. And so I did put the gold in, but I do like the fact that she says in hindsight, she wouldn't have put done that color change. And I'm not, because Mary is the, is the, is the part that's missing down there, it would be quite easy for me to go in and take uh, that gold part out and replace it. So... Uh, I was, thank you for that comment, um, was thinking that myself, um, but I actually really appreciate that someone who has completed it and has, has completed it and looked at it for years is going, it's one of the things that, that you would have changed. Um, you also made a comment to watch the, on the sheep that one calls for the specialty fiber and one of the sheep does not. So I did actually go back. So I have... I've completed the sheet on the center panel. Um, but I actually went back and looked at the chart and went, I, I stitched them both with DMC. So on, certainly on the copy of the pattern that I have, it has not, um, they both sheep on the center panel call for just regular DMC, not the specialty fiber. So I don't know if that's a difference between print runs um, I've completed the sheep. I'm fine with the sheep the way they are, but thank you for the comment. My questions for you are going to have to do with the camel. <laughs> and we'll get to that in just a little bit here. But if you are willing to entertain some very specific Marbet questions, uh, please shoot me an email at citystitcher52 at gmail.com. Um, and then, uh, Miss Bob and... Mrs. Bob and Lacer, uh, Lace, Lacer, Lace, um, she had made a comment on a previous video that uh, she's enjoyed watching my progress and that it was making her want her, so she also has, owns the charts and was thinking that she should start this. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm glad that you have that reaction because I would have thought after listening to me for weeks on weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks complain about Marbeck. <laughs> I'm glad that you think you should start it 
and hopefully your journey will be lovely and maybe not nearly as whiny and moany as mine has been. Anyway, so those are the questions from the last uh, couple of videos. Again, thank you for your comments. I really do appreciate them. Comments and questions and suggestions for topics are always welcome. Um, again, if you've got comments or questions and you don't feel comfortable um, putting them onto the video as a public comment, you can email me at citystitcher52 at gmail.com. Um, I'm happy to take a comment or a question there as well, and we'll respond to it in the following week's video. Mostly if I haven't missed it. So sorry about that, Denise and uh, Marsha, about missing your comments from a couple of videos ago. So that's previous uh, questions. So with that, let's get on with some stitching. And now that we've talked about the Marbeck Nativity, let's start with the Marbeck Nativity. Still working on it, yes. Welcome to the camel. If you're new, the Marbeck Nativity is this gigantic fire fireplace screen-sized end product. Um, so this is the camel, I'm working on the camel. Um, and I will say, the things that I do to avoid doing the things that I am hesitant about is quite a bit. So there was progress made this week, and as usual, it's my line every week. Not as much progress as I had been hoping for, because I'm really reluctant to start a couple of things. So here's where I'm at on the camel. So what have I accomplished this week? So one, I got these ridiculous stones in there, which were annoying as I'll get out. And again, it's one of those ones where dear, dear designers who probably don't watch my video, these random thingies, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily like stitching them. And in this case, I don't necessarily think it adds a ton to this, but you know, this is being given as a gift, so I followed the chart, um, and I did all of this, um, the, the grass, all of this grass, and again, can't stand these little ones down here, because they're in the middle of nowhere, um, but again, did them with a smile on your face, um, and I was surprised that actually putting the grass took me longer than I thought it was going to take. And I don't necessarily love doing that part. Again, I'm totally fine. I'm happy that it's in. I like how it looks. I didn't love the process. Um, but, you know, hey, it's in there. And because it took longer than I thought it was going to take, once I got in and I kind of went, I'm done with the camel. Because the next part of the camel is all this stuff in here with all the crinic ribbons, which I'm, this will be my first time doing that. And in my head, I've read the instructions and I know what to do, but there's a difference between intellectually knowing what to do and translating that into a really good finished product when you're stitching. So we'll talk about that in plants. So. Stay tuned for a couple more minutes and we'll come back to this. So I worked on the camel for a bit, uh, but spent more time working on, uh, again, Lady Scarlet's Journey. So this is Lady Scar Scarlet's Journey part one, part two, and part three make the entire banner. So that's what the final product is going to look like. So, uh, where did we leave off? So, from last week, uh, there's my squirrel, which I call a squirrel because that's what it says in the chart, or chipmunk, uh, if you prefer. And I did all of these uh, very tiny acorns. Technically, there is an error in one of them, and I discovered it and went, I don't care. Again, this was my least favorite band so far of the whole project, and I think even at the end of the project, this will be my least favorite band of all. 
but say la vie. Uh, so this also, uh, so part two comes with um, that over dyed silk called autumn foliage. I have, uh, I barely used any of it. So it is only used to back stitch these acorns with one strand and it is combined with one strand of DMC uh, for these specialty stitches below the acorns. That's it. So I have, it's not like there's enough there to do, you know, a lot of anything, but on some weird little random project that it's, it's something that I could use. We'll get to that part in a little bit as well. Um, so, uh, down here with the spiders and this darning stitch, that is the end of Lady Scarlet's Journey Part 2. Um, and so everything below that, starting with the pine, coin, pine cones, down is Part 3. So again, uh, a lot of work on Lady Scarlet's Journey this week. Why? Because I was avoiding working on the camel. Anyway. Um, so just like last week, uh, I do enjoy the fact that the bands are named, so I'm just going to run through the bands. Um, so the one with the squirrel is called, uh, First Signs of Fall. Uh, so this band down here is called, uh, Time to... Pick the grapes. Now you can't see the grapes because the grapes are beads and I haven't done the beads yet. And then this last band here is called October Night is Such a Fright. So these are eyes peering through the darkness and the spiders. And then on part three, uh, these are uh, falling pine cones in the woods. Uh, Cardinal and the Camellias. This is a tree trimming party in the pine grove. And this is called Clover. The cat welcomes visitors. And there's a band below that that's called Home for Christmas. So here's a closer look of what that bottom. So this is what part three is going to look like at the end. So the trees are almost, well, the trees are done. I need to do the back stitching for these ladybugs. And I laugh because, again, when you're reading your chart, the, lady, the ladybugs have names in that band. They are Scarlet, because it's Lady Scarlet's Journey, Scarlet, Rhett, Melanie, and Ashley. And if you know your movies, you probably know where those names are coming from. Um... And so technically, uh, all I've got is this bottom two bands to finish. So I've got a decent start on, on the second to last band, uh, which is a full coverage section. And then that very small band at the bottom. Again, I have taken the border uh, all the way down to the bottom. So this is the bottom of the chart. I haven't quite, there's a couple more to go in here and I need to fill in with the other two colors that go in there. So my plan for this week is, because uh, I avoid working on the camel, my plan for this week is that I will be finishing Lady Scarlet's journey, both the stitching as well as going back and putting the beads in for all three. So if you've noticed, I also have this off of the end scroll rods, because I'm just going to unroll it back to the very beginning and go, this is my new year, new start. So I started this project on January the 1st. I had nothing on it. Uh, when I started, when I started 2021, and I'm hoping by the end of January uh, that I will have fully finished Lady Scarlet's journey, the entire journey, part one, part two, part three, including the beads and the charms. So that's what I'm going to focus on first and get that done so I can give myself a sense of accomplishment. And then the rest of January has to be devoted to the camel. 
So we'll see where we get to. And so what that means, because I, so I don't think I'm going to have any problems finishing this. I think that's totally achievable in the next week. I'm hoping it will be achievable in actually the next couple of days. So, um, yes, I'm very pleased with how this is turning out. Um, so this is a, uh, last week's video, I made a comment about, you know, I'm a big proponent of stitch what you want on the fabric you want with the colors you want and all that kind of stuff. I will say now that I have stitched this, uh, this is not a chart that I think can be stitched on anything other than an even weave, whether it's Jobel and Lugana or Linen. There's just too much over one. There's too many specialty stitches. Um, this is absolutely not conducive to stitching on Ada. So this is an example where unlike in Sunflowers where I said it's, it's an it depends, this is a chart where I'd say no, 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 no. You will be very, you will be very unhappy if you tried to stitch this on an Ada. So uh, stitch what you want on what you want. But if you want to stitch this, I really, I would highly strongly say that you really do need to do it on the linen, Jobelin, or Lugana. And again, mine, uh, I have done this on a 28 count pewter Jobelin, uh, which is not the called for fabric. Uh, the called for fabric, it was a natural linen. Um, so again, why did I change it? Well, cause you know, that's too brown for me. Lots of people like their naturals and I think that's fantastic. I don't particularly like it. This is more my color palette and I'm very pleased with how it looks on this particular fabric. And in the lead up to kitting up stuff for 2021, I did have multiple fabrics pulled out for this that I was contemplating and I am very happy with this I'm very happy with my choice. So I think that's, yeah, happy with how this is working out. Uh, again, my plan is to uh, finish this as a bell pull. Um, so it's gonna be really hard to tell here. So there was a specialty bell pull wear from Just Nan that goes with this chart. Um, this bell pull, is no longer being made. So when you go to the Just Nan website, you can't you can't see this bell pull. So uh, you can't order one from uh, shops can't order one from them because they don't have them anymore. Now it's not to say that you may be able to stumble across a shop that potentially has one. Again, this is a 20 year old pattern. I don't know when the bell pull hardware was discontinued. And I will say, I don't have this bell pull hardware. I do, however, um, when one of my LNSs was closing, and usually when stores close, they sale, and you know I like a sale. Um, so I did pick up some Just Nan uh, hardware. And so this is the, the bell pull hardware I'm planning on using for mine. And I've just taken off the Actually, I'm going to pop it out of the box as well. So this is um, this is the hardware that I have purchased and have in my stash uh, for finishing this project. Um, and in case you want to know, this is called this is uh, the code for it is PW01PP. It is called floral ribbon. The opening is three and three quarters, which is fine. Um, I'm just gonna pop this back out again. So in my head, that will look lovely. So technically not the called for, but I still think it will look fantastic on this particular on this particular project. So I'm very happy with that combination. And again, um, with the pewter jobelin and the gray of this, I, 
I'm I'm happy with that combination as well so I just thought I would now when is it actually going to get finished into a bell pull I am NOT making any promises and I'm not making any comments um, I will say my intention is that it's going to be finished as a bell pull I have uh, purchased the hardware for it to be finished as a bell pull um, you know good luck with you know I will show it to you once it has been finished in the bell pull but I don't have a time frame for when that's going to be accomplished okay so let's talk about stitch from stash so I have been successful again this week uh, about I have not purchased anything uh, for crop any any cross stitch related things I will say um, the sneak peeks are starting to arrive for um, releases that are coming at the end of February early March I will say Jeanette Douglas her blooming bouquet number six she released a sneak peek of it I will tell you secretly I've actually seen the model it's beautiful it's really beautiful I love I love blooming bouquet number six which is called hopeful um, I love it love it love it love it now and uh, gratefully I again I talked about this before one of my birthday slash Christmas presents was a gift certificate to my LNS which is great because when it gets released um, I will use my gift certificate so that I can get my get my chart because it really is blooming bouquet number six is I really yeah that that one is coming into the stash man I, I really like that one uh, so stay tuned for when she shows the rest of you what it looks like like I say I um, was graciously allowed a sneak peek at the model and it's just uh, it's lovely 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 she's got more releases that are coming out that are also lovely but she has put out onto her uh, Facebook page and her Instagram the sneak peek of blooming bouquet number six and it's wonderful and I will tell you I love it love it love it Jeanette you did awesome which I think I said to you several times when I saw it um, so uh, haven't purchased anything new have plans to purchase gift certificate so won't count um, but some of the stuff that I ordered from previous orders in 2020 have started to show up so I do have some stash to show you it's not it's not outrageous um, but it finally did arrive um, so I took this out of the plastic so I'm going to be just careful with this so this is the color and cotton thread pack for hands-on design um, their winter banner uh, so these uh, these things I'm going to show you uh, these were all done uh, from an order that I made now again this is where I get confused where I go Black Friday slash Cyber Monday I, I get those two mixed up because I feel like they blend run into each other um, so this is uh, from an order that I placed uh, during that particular sale period sale period so those are those colors for that particular chart um, I also purchased uh, this um, tray so it's a it's a small tray it's not terribly big there's you know hand size for measurement ish so not huge so why did I get this tray well a couple of reasons one beside my stitch, stitching spot um, I actually uh, you know, I was cleaning it off at the beginning of the year and discovered I had left a lot of things on there I was cleaning up stuff from projects that I finished like in October September and still had some stuff hanging around so I figured if I had a small tray to contain things when this tray got full it would it, I would do better about making sure I got stuff put away Two, I watched uh, this is quite some time ago but on the hands-on design uh, floss tube channel she did uh, she's got a small tray 
And what she did is she put, it's really hard because it's white, um, she took um, that that uh, a sheet of, of magnet stuff, so like the stuff that you can cut into, and so she cut it and then covered it with uh, a pretty fabric, because, you know, sometimes we just want our stuff to be pretty, uh, covered it with a fabric, but because the magnet was still, so the entire size of the tray, um, you know, whether she was putting her scissors in there, it just gave it a little bit more stick to itiveness so that if something came by, and again, she's got pets, um, that if somebody or something came by and uh, accidentally knocked this off, it would hopefully try to contain some of it. Uh, so that is my plan. Uh, I already have this uh, sitting beside me. Um, this is what the label looks like. Um, so I have to go get the magnet thing. I have to go find the pretty fabric to put on it. Uh, so I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, the pretty fabric to go on it, the magnet, um, and then hopefully get that done. Now, timing for that is all unknown. Uh, but I... I I need to go to a fabric store and quite frankly with the restrictions in place and they're changing and I don't even know which fabric stores are open or what anyway but that's the plan for that even in the meantime I'm still using this tray putting stuff in it hoping to keep stuff corralled on my uh, on my end table beside my stitching spot and then I also picked up a couple of these zappy dots um, So these are both hands-on design. So again, why did I get these ones? Well, one, because I like them. Two, because they were on sale. <laughs> uh, so this is the pumpkin one uh, from Chock Full, her series Chock Full. Yes, uh, Chock Full Boo Jar. And then this is the Chock Full Bloom Jar. So something Halloween-y, fallish, and something uh, summerish, springish. I call this really summer. Now, uh, one, I got them because I like them. Two, I got them because they were on sale. Three, um, I got them because I have discovered that that is a size of needle minder that I like. So this is, uh, also a zappy dot, uh, one. This is, uh, a Lizzie Kate version. Again, I don't know if, because uh, Lizzie Kate is no longer active, I don't know whether you can still get the Lizzie Kate Zappy Dots. I haven't checked. Um, and the one that I usually have on Lady Scarlet. Okay, just so you know, my video unexpectedly quit, so now I'm going to have to piece these together. But continuing on... Um, this is the zappy dot that I have on, uh, usually have on Lady Scarlet's Journey, which is a Glendon Place pattern. Uh, uh, I don't remember what it's called. I own the chart. I own the dinky dies. Have I started it? Of course not. That's not the point. But it's lovely. I have it kitted up. It's sitting in a bag. Not for 2021, though. <laughs> but anyway, so... There's, there's the zappy dot that's normally on Lady Scarlet's journey. All right. Uh, and that uh, are my stash acquisitions. So again, uh, they don't count towards my Stitch from Stash budget for 2021 because these are orders that were made in 2020 and paid for in 2020. Welcome to... Yeah, I ordered it on Black Friday slash Cyber Monday. It has taken until close to the end of January for uh, these to arrive to me. So again, welcome to things in the mail system are slow. Um, on the news where I am in Canada, one of the major sorting systems as um, packages are coming into Canada um, have had an outbreak and they've had to shut down and blah, blah, blah. And they've just said it's the impact of that particular sorting station 
is going to have a very quick and major impact on uh, packages coming into Canada. So anyway, again, it's not, I have 2021 projects kitted up for the entire year. So let's not kid ourselves that I am desperately awaiting for any of the things that I ordered in 2020, which have not yet arrived to arrive because I have 2021 already kitted up. Uh, two, I also did get a notice, uh, a message from my LNS, again, that an order that I had placed last year, uh, which I think I had commented on in a previous video that um, originally she was expecting that uh, it would have arrived in December and everything would have been good, um, got held up in customs and was going to take a while to arrive. It has finally arrived. Um, so I've not made arrangements for me to go out and pick up that stuff again because, you know, it's paid for. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I think they like it out of their hair, so I do need to work on that. Um, but I still have um, a few more things on order uh, that I've ordered with them that have not yet arrived again. I talked about this. Um, I ordered some pictures of this plus fabric back in... September, which has not yet arrived. Again, that is the timeline for Picture This Plus these days. I ordered it in September. I still do not have it. I'm okay with that, and I knew that when I placed my order, um, that that was going to be the case. So I, I knew what I was getting myself into, and I'm okay with that. Wow, the lighting on this one is really going weird now. I don't know what's going on needs to settle down. Anyway, so those are my stash acquisitions. Uh, I technically have not finished anything yet that counts as a credit towards Stitch from Stash. I have not spent anything, so technically I'm still in the black for the month of January because my $25 budget has not been spent on anything. Wow, I don't know what's going on there. Hmm, this is really weird. Yeah. Hmm. What's going on? Let's see if that helps. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, so that's Stitch from Stash update. That's my stitching update. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about free charts. It's actually a free chart, but leading to a series. And I've already talked about this once before. So this is from the Victoria Sampler Facebook group. Uh, during 2021, in the Facebook group only, they are planning on releasing a series of charts uh, each month. Uh, so, you know, there's a January chart, a February chart, etc., etc. I'm mentioning this because uh, the January chart is only available through January. So once we hit February, you will no longer be able to get this free chart um, from the Victoria Sampler Facebook group. Uh, I will put a link to the Facebook group in the notes below. Um, but if you have any interest, you need to join the group and you need to download it because once we get, again, once we hit February 1, you won't be able to get this. Um, and I'm showing this particular uh, picture because it is the cover picture from the group. Um, so I felt really good about uh, using that because it's available there for anybody to see if you're searching for the group. But the photo shows a number of finishes that people have done. And it shows the variety that people are doing. So this is, so these are pictures of all of the same chart. And you can see that not everybody is doing them in the same colors. Um, I actually really like the fact that this, whoever, whoever did this one actually put the word January up there. I really like that. I was like, whew, that's. That's a change I really like. Some people have put Jan down here. Uh, some people have put 2021. To be perfectly honest, I've downloaded the chart. I didn't pay any attention to um, <laughs> what the chart actually says to do. I don't know whether it says January 2021. I don't know what it says. Um, there is another lady in the group. She's actually made this into so that it looks like it's a covered bridge, which is also a, a nice option. So again, it's been really fantastic being a part of the Facebook group. 
so that I can so that you can see all of these different things. Um, I don't know if they've got a hashtag. I should look that up. See if they've got a hashtag for it. But it's been fantastic seeing everybody posting in the group with what they're doing. Um, now, as usual, I am not doing anything with this. This is not part of my 2021 plans, other than my plan is to download the chart every month. Um, but because until I see what all 12 of them look like, I won't, I won't be able to decide. I'm not good with the mystery. Um, so here's the chart. Again, it's only, this particular chart is only going to be available for free from the Victoria Sampler Facebook group till the end of January. Once we hit February 1st, it will no longer be available, but the February ones will be coming out. Uh, so even on this one, they divided it into three separate parts. Uh, so you only really need to download uh, part three to get all of it. Um, but they released it as three separate charts so that you could stitch it over the course of the month. Um, but I just, I thought this is a really, I loved when they put this up as the, as the picture for the group, because it makes me feel better about showing other people's work because this is the Facebook cover. Uh, so that's the, that's the January free chart. Again, Victoria Sampler from the Facebook group only. And with that, we're going to talk about a previous finish because the previous finish actually ties into my topic for today is let's talk about changing a pattern. So I'm going to show you the pattern. I couldn't actually find the pattern itself, so I'm showing you a picture of what the pattern looks like. So again, this is another Just Nan finish for me. So because we're doing, I'm doing Just Nan January. Uh, so this is called uh, Crystal Roses. So this is Just Nan chart 170 called Crystal Roses. And that is what the chart looks like. So here is my finish of that chart. Ready? Here it comes. Here's my version. Yep, they look really different for a wide variety of reasons. But yes, I'm holding them up side by side so that you can see that it is the same chart. But mine looks really different. So this is, um, this topic of let's talk about changing a chart is going to come up a few times over the course of 2021 because clearly there are other charts that I'm planning on changing. But I thought, and you've, you've heard me talk about even last week. Um, last week I took last week's chart and I made it bluer than what was called for. Um, this chart is, what I've changed on this is similar, only I've gone one step further because I've had to change. So again, the white uh, is the same, but everything else I changed, I don't know, the pink snowflake, I didn't want, I didn't like the pink. I didn't want a pink snowflake. Um, so I changed it to green. Now the story, there's a story that goes along with this one as well. So this is actually my second attempt at this. So my first attempt, um, I had pretty much stitched, I think I had done all of the white cross stitches and I got to a point where I just went, you, the, the fabric that I, ha I had chosen was too pale. You couldn't, as far as I was concerned, you could not see the snowflake on there. Um, and so I got to a point where I said like, okay, it's time to stop. You need to stop doing this because you're never going to be happy with this combination. And so uh, I had a friend who had watched me stitching on it back when we used to be able to get together and stitch. She had watched me stitching on it and she thought it was totally fine. But I knew that I was never going to be happy with it. I was always going to look at that and go, the fabric is too light. And so um, I gifted her my whip. 
I have no idea what the status of that whip is. I don't know if she's done anything with it since then. I wasn't going to do anything and there was no way I was going to rip all of that stuff out. She said she was interested in it. She thought it looked fine. That's great. I gave it to her. I started over. So this is my second fabric choice. And sometimes when you're changing things that happens. You know, I started and I went, hmm, I think it's looking a little pale, but I went, you probably shouldn't judge it just on this. And I went, if you just got far enough into it, it would work out. And I got to the, a point where I said, no, this isn't. But I still liked it well enough. And I still liked the concept of this well enough. I just went, you need to make this fabric darker. Now, again, this is not an overly dark fabric. Um... But this fabric, as far as I'm concerned, is a, was a better choice. I'm very happy with how this worked out. Um, again, so I changed the fabric. I had to change the soie d'algés that it looked for. So all of those um, interior colors changed. So, you know, same thing. I took the, I took the called for colors and looked at the gradations um, that were on the chart. And then I just changed them to the same number of gradations that I uh, needed for mine. I don't have the chart near me, so I can't tell you how many of those are. Again, on my working copy, I do have noted this. And actually, as I've been talking about these, I've said to myself, which I have not done yet, you need to go into your Xstitch app and actually put them into your app as opposed to just keeping the working copies where you've made notes around how you changed it. And what colors you used. It did mean that, uh, so a lot of the bead pack that came with this I could use. So white, silver beads, totally fine. Um, but I did have to swap some of the other ones. Like certainly the center, the center bead, I had to come up with that on my own. Um, but I do have uh, LNS that has a lot of beads that they stock. That's not a Mill Hill, Mill Hill bead, so they've got Delicas and they've got the Swarovskis and they've got, you know, whatever. Um, so I just went there and, you know, took, took my piece with me and said, I need beads of this size and I need X amount and whatever. And so I changed out the beads that way. So on this one, I've changed really the whole palette for the, for the pattern. Um, kept the white, you know, it's a snowflake, the white, the white was fine, but I changed, instead of using a natural linen, I changed it to a green linen, and I changed out all of the pink, um, from a thread perspective as well as a bead perspective, and changed it to this, and I'm very, I'm very happy with mine. So, this is my version of Just Nan's Crystal Roses, I've already forgotten the name. Yes, Crystal Roses. Having a moment going, I swear I've got the working copy beside me here somewhere. Anywho, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so again, that's my previous finish. Uh, Crystal Roses, Just Nan 170. I really like this one too. I like the blue one from last week. I like this one too. Stay tuned for my previous finish that I'm going to show you next week. So that's, so again, that's just a little bit about the process about changing your pattern. Um, and again, uh, I like it because it, I think it does go, you know, you can see that they're the same pattern, but they're different. Okay, and I'm also going to uh, say, in case any of you were watching last week, nobody commented on it, um, Just Nan actually has a new release. They have a new snowflake pattern that they've just released in 2021. And so this is called the Queen Snowflake. So there's what that looks like. And I will say, now I will say, I, I strongly believe that this picture does not do it justice. 
Um, and I haven't decided if I'm going to get this or not. So a couple of things here. One, I don't want a pink snowflake. I'm still, <laughs> I look, I knew about this chart last week and I didn't say anything about it, but I, I laugh because even now I'm going like, I don't think I want a pink snowflake. Um, two, you know, I've, well, I don't know what color I would change this to. So I've done a green snowflake. I did the sunflowers. I've got a blue snowflake. Um, if I were to change this one, so I would have to change it because this color combination is not necessarily working for me. Um, but if you've got suggestions about a color combination, I already know, Miss Kitty, I already know what you're going to say. Make a teal one. Oh, maybe, maybe it might come into the fold. Teal, teal peacock colors. Soon as I said that, if you've got other color suggestions, feel free to put them in the comments down below. But as soon as I said that, I, Miss Kitty, I knew you were going to comment. I know where you're going to go with this. Maybe change it to teals. Maybe, maybe, maybe it might, it might happen. Anyway, so that's, that's Just Nan's latest release. Um, there was a needle slide that goes with it. I think there might be one other one that came out, but it was one that it didn't particularly interest me. But this one, I'm like, great, here's another snowflake. The only other, the other one holding me back uh, as well was kind of like, I have a series of snowflakes and they're all framed the same. Uh, so I just don't know whether I could now you'd think with a frame like this it would be easy enough to get so I'd have to I'd have to check into that and see if I can replicate it maybe teal teal okay dear people if you've got suggestions about uh, what color to change uh, the Queen's snowflake to please put them in the comments down below. And again, if you're not comfortable um, making a public comment, you can always send me an email to citystitcher52 at gmail.com. So there we go. Uh, that's all I have for you this week. Uh, one of my longer videos. And again, it'll be interesting to see because now I have to splice these things together. Um, so this might be coming out a little later than you expected. It was also interesting, uh, I was watching somebody else uh, where they were commenting that things are changing on YouTube and the upload speeds have been getting slower. So last week's uploaded about the same speed. So this one, it'll be interesting to see how long this takes to upload. And with that, again, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. I hope you are all uh, safe and healthy and finding time to stitch. Um, and if not, make a plan for how you're going to fit some stitching into your week this week. And with that, I hope you all have a great week and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care.